sure. Yeah, you're good. Yeah, yeah. We can see you and we see that it's a person and you're like this big. And the log is like this big. Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my backyard. This time we're going to be slabbing up this giant uh, black walnut log here that my buddy Jeff brought all the way from Ohio. Uh, Jeff reached out a little while ago and asked if I wanted to cut this giant log. And I told him, you know, if you're crazy enough to bring a log all the way from Ohio to Minnesota, absolutely freaking lootly. <laughs> so, so as we're getting the log offloaded, Jeff's going to tell us a little bit about how he ended up with this big log and how he ended up here. Uh, what was it, 800 miles? 900 miles? 800, about 800 miles. Yeah, there you go. Moving, moving like 8,000 pound log, 800 miles. There's, there's a lot of eights in this one. <laughs> All right, so a year ago, I knew uh, the homeowner, that the property owner that had the uh, walnut, and I asked if uh, he would want to sell it, and he did. So we ended up working out a deal, and we, they cut the walnut down for me, and then I put it on my trailer and took it home. And then I started contacting people to cut it and saw your videos and everything, and I said, you'd be the perfect person to do it. A little bit of the backstory here on, on, this, on this log. Uh, once I had it cut and had it in uh, my property, where I have a bunch of other walnut that we intend to slab up, I, I want to make tabletops, and so we started slabsrus.com. Uh, my buddy Brian contacted me saying, hey, I saw that tree when it was standing, and the next thing I know, it's not there, there's a stump, and I, I want to know, I want some of that wal walnut. I, I'm a walnut fanatic. Uh, do you really have it? And he tracked me down, and we had that conversation, and sure enough, I still had the log, and we uh, figured out that we could bring it to Matt to uh, slab it for us, and we're gonna take and use the slabs. Brian wants a couple, I'm gonna make some tables out of it. We'll probably end up selling some of it. So uh, yeah, slabsrs.com. So this particular uh, walnut crotch, it's 54 inches at the base. This tip to tip here at the crotch uh, ends is 73 inches or so, give or take. It's about seven and a half feet long. We estimate it weighs right around 8,000 pounds using some of the apps. Um, the center section that's narrower, that's about four foot in diameter. So we knew all that before we cut it. Um, we, we got a little piece of metal here in the middle, which we didn't know until it was on the ground, but that's okay, we'll work around that. And uh, we have another one similar that's about six uh, foot long, very similar dimensions, walnut, nice crotch, haven't cut it yet, and then, Brian and I, in going through our discussions with what we're going to do and how we're going to cut these uh, crotches, he ends up finding another one standing walnut tree that, that he negotiated a, uh, a purchase of that we haven't cut yet that's even bigger than this one. It's every bit of eight foot high, five or six feet across, eight feet, nine feet high. Uh, humongous that we're, we're going to deal with later down the road perhaps. And then I have a lot of other walnut that came off my property and some neighbor's properties that uh, is smaller, but yet still to be cut up into really nice, hard to find walnut slabs, in my opinion. So the, uh, the loading and positioning was a lot less exciting than I thought it would be, but uh, I guess today that's a good thing. So the log is on there, it's in the, uh, the correct position this way to get the crotches aligned. So that was, that's what we got for the first cut. Um, let's take a quick look around here and see what's going on. It looks like there should be a pretty good amount of figure in select spots in here. So at least with the bark removed, we can kind of see a bit of the undulation in the grain here. We got these little bumps, bump things here. So that should be some interesting grain and figure. And then let me see where we're on a few of these things. There we go. On the bark here, you can see the actual figure in the wood beneath it uh, kind of coming up through the bark. So we got a little bit of curl right in here, which is uh, pretty exciting. Coming around here, this butt end is what, 50 something inches. So that's pretty big. And we got some more figure happening, of course, beneath this limb here, we got compression figure. So we have all the weight from this limb here, pushing all this down here. And we got a little bit of rippling here. And hopefully you can see that in the bark. You see the little ripples and things here. So there is some figuring here as you would expect. 
but overall this is a freaking big log. <laughs> so the saw is uh, ready to go. We're gonna make the first cut and then uh, take a look and see what we got. Uh, that takes care of the first cut. It was uh, interesting to say the least. I think I heard a metal contact somewhere in here. So this is a little big. So we're actually gonna set this uh, waste piece aside and we'll bring it back when we're done and we'll probably cut it again into something. So I'm gonna grab a skid steer and we're gonna get this piece out of here and take a look and see what's inside this tree. I don't know if you noticed, but that's kind of a big log. Okay, Jeff, it is tradition that the guest of honor throws the first bucket of water. So uh, I know you watched a few of these. Let's, let's see uh, let's see what you got. That was, that was good. You got some good momentum. Uh, Whoop. The beauty is there. That is nice. So over here is the, uh, where's that nail? There it is. So there's a little nail cut through. Not a, not a huge deal. I can't really get a whole lot in frame because this log is so big. <laughs> but, it's a big log. I mean, it's pretty clear. And oh yeah, down here you can start to see we're getting into the, uh, the buttress root patterns. So you have a bunch of compression figure down here at the very base of the tree where this buttress comes up in here and supports the whole tree. You're going to have some pretty interesting wild figure down there. So that's why we're going to recut the off cut because it's going to have a whole bunch of cool stuff down here. You ready to get wet? <laughs> Splash zone. You weren't kidding. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So as always with walnut, when you first cut it, it has a uh, not super exciting color to it, but it will eventually oxidize to more of what's going on down here. So it's a little more greenish right now, but maybe in 20 minutes or so, it'll be much more of that deep purpley brown that we're used to. So I'm thinking with this thing, this is that wire that is uh, over here. And this probably just travels all the way through the tree to there. Put a lot of water in this bucket. I like you. <laughs> wow, it's basically just clear with bursts of figure here and there. That's, that's kind of the, uh, I don't know, general theme around this log so far. Like here we're getting into that um, compression figure here. So you can see all the ripples. 
and you can see how they come out through the bark. So you can actually see them here. If I get the glare to go away. There we go. So you can see the ripples, and you can see how it kind of comes through the bark. Whew. And there's a little piece of wire there in the middle. Oh, and we're starting to get some little crotch figure here because we are getting down there. So probably the next one we'll start seeing some actual crotch figure as we come down here. Oh, here's some more compression figure. Ha ha ha. It's a big log. I don't know if we, have we said that yet? It's, it's kind of a big log. All right, so we have a little more room to work. We're gonna put the trailer out uh, by the road and just bring the slabs up. As, uh, as needed, so there's a little more space.
Jeff's not here, but I'm still gonna toss some water. He's busy stickering wood. They're definitely into the crotch zone now. Just in time. It's, it's, it's getting crotchy. I think that little metal inlay there is a nice touch. Yeah, it's customized. It's custom, yeah. Ooh. You have to get the Nathan paper. Right here. <laughs> yeah. Even better. Yeah, that's all the iron in the mm -hmm. in the cut there. Oh, oh that's a nice figure up in here. Yeah. Hey, you look like tiny next to that. I look tiny next <laughs> to You look tiny. <laughs> Make sure you get my good side. That is, that's some scale for you right there. Yeah. That's definitely. We got, some, we got the figure down here at the buttress. There you go. Arm span. <laughs> it is an arm span. What are we looking at? Almost 70, huh? Almost 70 inches right there. That ain't, that ain't bad. A little over 8. 102. Nice. Over 8 foot. Okay, the very tip. 40 inches. 40? And then up here, we're like probably a little less than that, 39? 37. 37? I don't know if you can see on camera, but there's a whole like bunch of figure. Yeah. All those ripples over there, those aren't, those aren't blade marks. Those ripples. are all, right. that's all figure right there. So you got a curly walnut all oh, up this good. side here. And then over here, you got some of that compression figure with the ripples yeah. and through here. So we got some ripply figured grain here and the other side is all curly. And then we get, we're starting to get into the crotch figures a little bit there. And then we have our little friend, like the copper jacketed steel wire thing right there. Yeah, that's just beautiful. Fourth, fourth slab. Slab number four. All right, let's get this thing on the trailer and uh, take a look at another one, I guess. Yeah, it's awesome. All right, let's see what's hiding under all this. That is a Big piece of wood. That was a fun one. Man, that is that is something. I think the next one's gonna have like the most stuff. And look at you can see all this curl here. It's all it's all curly walnut on this side right here. Walk around this side. Where you have the uh, some more of the compression curl, and we're getting into the crotch figure now. You can see another limb here, so it's like a tri crotch at some point there, and then we got our little inclusion there. Oh man. You look like you need a shower. <laughs> That's what it's all about right there. Throwing water on a piece of wood. <laughs> oh, that's a nice one. Yeah. I actually like this one better than the other one. Here's your metal. Oh, yeah. In the bar conclusion. That's but cool. It's and it's... It's closer to the crops than before. Yeah. Oh, hey, look at that. And it's got that inclusion or whatever that is. Yeah, that's a bark inclusion. You can see the copper around it now? Yep. It was good. 
Yeah, yeah, that's nice. Yeah, some nice straight green stuff, and all the crazy stuff happens up here. There's our little piece of metal in there. We're getting in some serious crotch figure action there. Look at this, look at this curl. That's showing up really good on camera now. Look at all this. That's all the compression figure from this big limb pushing down on the base of the tree. Oh. Oh. Oh, oh, that's nice. So we're getting through this bark inclusion here. We have some pretty crazy figure happening up there for the crotch. And it's kind of the same thing down here. More figure and straight green and stuff. We're into, it looks like we're pretty much quarter sun at this point. So we have, oh, we got, we got a little bit of ray fleck in there because the wall does not have big rays, but you see some flecking in there. And then there is the pith right there. Ooh, that's nice. Uh. Oh, <laughs> so much for that. nice all right here's this guy so unfortunately i am running out of time here we got family photos today so let me quickly take a look at these last ones and that's probably going to be it okay last one Ooh. Ooh. yeah now we're getting into the uh the crotch or the lower limb that's sticking out the bottom of this tree so this is a triple crotch so there is another limb coming down so now we're starting to get into that guy right here but lots of nice and crazy figure in this stuff all right so we ran out of time on saturday uh pictures went about as well as pictures with three children, five and under can go. It's basically like a struggle of, can you please, please smile? I know you know how to smile. Can you please smile for this? <laughs> so I want to say a big thank you again to Jeff and Brian for coming up and uh, experiencing this. Uh, so we kind of got left with this guy and then the first cut and then the, um, the other log that Jeff had brought as well. He's actually gonna leave for me, so that was a very nice uh, gesture. With these uh, two slabs, I'm gonna get out of this guy and that one. I will either, well, I will dry them and have them, and if our paths cross in the next few years, I will give them back to Jeff, or if Jeff wants me to sell them for him, I will do that, or if uh, Jeff wants me to use them for my own thing, and I have a project for them, uh, I'll use them for that. But regardless, I still gotta cut this thing up, so I'm gonna start getting this thing cut. Um, we're gonna do uh, two pieces at uh, 10 quarter. That'll leave me with a piece of 12 quarter at the bottom. So that should uh, work out really nicely. Three more slabs left in this half. And then I'll bring over that first off cut and just kind of flatten it out and just try and get whatever I can out of it. It's gonna be kind of a, it's gonna have, well, it's gonna be very sappy because it's towards the outside of the log, obviously. But there should be some interesting pockets of figure like they're down towards the buttress roots and maybe up towards the crotch area. There might be some, some peakings of heartwood in those areas. The rest will be pretty much uh, sapwood though.
All right, this is getting down to like <laughs> almost nothing here. Almost all sapwood. So this, I guess, would be considered the B-side uh, to most people. So mostly like entirely sapwood all through here until we get down to the buttress where you can start seeing some of the heartwood. But yeah, there's still a lot of figure in this uh, buttress area. You can see all the curl right there. So I still have a little bit there. So I'll probably give this another slice just to get a small area here because it feels kind of wasteful to just throw this figure chunk away. There's also not much left in this piece either, but yeah, maybe I'll give it another slice just to see what's in there. I don't know. It came a long way. I feel like it's wasteful to just put this out for firewood, which is what I normally would do. But having traveled 800 miles, <laughs> I feel like it's uh, probably a good idea to get as much as possible out of this stuff. Or with this one, I think maybe I'll leave this one because it's gonna be a rain cap, probably, depending on how I stack these. So let's take a quick look at these three and then uh, do some quick other cuts. So this top one should be pretty interesting because it's got uh, it's got a little sapwood in it. And it's kind of in the area where the sapwood and the heartwood are kind of mixing together. So it should have a kind of interesting milky look. Oh, look at all this figure here. So this is a fantastic example of compression figure and you can really see it in this slab. So here's that limb that was all the way up here, all this way pushing down, smushing all of the fibers beneath it. And now you have a crazy amount of compression figure in there because all those ripples, we've intersected them because they're rippling in this direction with the grain. So just look at all the figure that's produced by the way that limb, incredible stuff. This is more like the milky stuff I was talking about. We have like sapwood and heartwood kind of peeking together in one piece and then we have the figure from the buttress root once again down there but ha 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 look how much more green this one is because it hasn't oxidized yet whoo that is fresh <laughs> we are through a lot of the compression figure we have a little bit of course still down here and we got a little bit of figure up here above this knot. So, you know, we're kind of getting through it. Oh, I don't know. I'm still, I'm still blown away by this. <laughs> oh, jeez, <laughs> that is crazy. Anyway, so that's that. That's, that's that one. Let's take a look at uh, the next guy. And then hopefully this will oxidize a little bit. So I've let this sit to oxidize for uh, maybe 20 minutes or so. I was cutting some uh, workbench kit parts. So now it's been oxidizing for a bit. It should be a little more purpley brown, like we're uh, kind of accustomed to with walnut. Ah, I mean, it's getting there. <laughs> it's still not quite all the way. So it's slightly less green, but there's still plenty of green in there. And this stuff has some pretty interesting grain patterns, that's for sure. So we got uh, some figure on top of here from above the crotch. We're getting this little tiny limb on here that's showing itself now. And a little bit of compression figure there. And we got some really nice stuff down here towards the buttress. So that is a really cool log. Not much there. <laughs> Ugh. Not a whole lot of wood here, <laughs> but that is cool though. It's a very cool, unique piece that could be used for something decorative, I guess. Uh, a little bit of figure here and there, but what's really cool about this one is like the, uh, the pattern as the sapwood comes through with the surface and kind of mixes with the heartwood. Very cool. And there's a little bit of figure right there from the buttress. So not a nice little small piece for, for something. <laughs> so we got a nice little stack of slabs here to find somewhere to go. This was uh, this was a fun one. I absolutely love these bigger logs that have a lot of crazy things going on, and especially uh, when people come this far to uh, have them sawn and spend the day with me. It's just so much fun spending some time with someone or other people that really appreciate and enjoy wood. So thanks again, Jeff. 
for making the trip. Really appreciate it. It was a lot of fun hanging out with you and cutting this log that you have been wanting to cut for so long. <laughs> if you are in the northeastern Ohio area, I will leave you a link to Jeff's information. You can check him out. He is uh, kind of getting into the slab thing and launching his business. So definitely check him out. And uh, yeah, <laughs> I know Brian who is here is taking two of the slabs and then I know Jeff is trying to make some uh, tables for his kids, uh, some of the other ones, but there's probably still some available from this log if you are interested. So that is going to do it for this one. Thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments on sawmilling, I guess, or anything back in the shop, please feel free to leave me a comment. I'll always be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, <laughs> happy woodworking.